Hey everyone, so clearly I'm not there because yay for COVID. <coughs> I'll try to hopefully keep my uh, coughing to a minimum. <coughs> Although, I don't know if I can promise you that it won't. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> you could tell. <coughs> uh, we'll figure out how we're going to deal with the quiz and all that stuff later. Um, I'm going to try and give you as much data as you possibly can, too, for the lab. So, overview of today. Obviously, we'll figure out the quiz later. Um, we'll deal with the cell cycle and mitosis and meiosis. The lab is actually... Honestly, this would have been one of the labs that would have finished really fast because there's not tons to do. And, hooray. So, in order to get cells to replicate... Uh, they do this. Oh, I thought I had the laser pointer. Oh, there it is. So this, so they can grow. We cells can replicate in order to replace dead cells or repair damaged tissues. We can also have cells replicate, so you can have it <coughs> clones, so asexual reproduction, or sexually. Sexual reproduction requires you to make different combinations of genes. And the way that all of this cell division stuff is organized <laughs> is in this thing that we call the cell cycle. So the cell cycle is just an organizational tool. It is real. It does exist. But we divide it up into stages to make our lives easier. One of the things that we notice that occurs during the cell cycle is we double the amount of DNA that, hap that we happen to have in our cells. And the way we do that is in the form of DNA called a chromosome. And all we mean by a chromosome is it's a continuous piece of DNA. It also has protein with it. This combination of DNA and protein is what we call chromatin. I know there's lots of words for all of this, which is thoroughly not enjoyable, but the words is the words. And what we see in this process is all of that stuff occurring. <coughs> We divide the cell cycle up into two distinct parts. We have one part where I don't see anything going on. We call that interphase. That's this big old loopy part right here. And then we have a portion of it, which is up here, where stuff does occur. We call that M phase. In terms of labeling parts, let's see if I could do this. It's going to be horrible. But this part here we call G1 meaning growth. We have S for synthesizing DNA, and then we have growth two. And we'll talk about what each of those does in a moment. When I look at interphase, the point of interphase is to get ready to divide the cell. And we break it up into various parts. All of these parts are phases. <coughs> are things that we can't visualize, so we need other chemical tricks to know what's going on. There's a phenomenon called G0, and this is outside of the cell cycle, and it's for what we would call non-replicating cells. In us, meaning animals, our skeletal muscles, so the muscles that we use to move our bones, <coughs> can't divide, and the, ner the neurons, which are the cells in our brain and in our nerves, they can't divide because of how they're built. And the result is they are outside of the cell cycle, or G0. You have some cells that stay in G0, but you can provoke them back into the cell cycle. Once they start back into the cell cycle, they begin in what we call G1. <coughs> cells doing its thing, it's alive, <laughs> right in a hip hip. At some point in G1, so G1 and G0 are effectively the same thing. It's just a matter of, are we getting a <coughs> signal to provoke us to start replicating? If I get one of those signals that says, let's replicate, the next step is what we call S phase or synthesis. We're going to replicate our DNA and we double the amount of chromatin per chromosome. And the result is we create structures called sister chromatids. Sister chromatids, if I were to draw <coughs> one of these beforehand, it would start out as a single line. This is 
I'm so sorry. This is an inaccurate way to draw it because it actually doesn't show up as a single line, but let's just, just let's pretend like it does. After S phase, this is when we see the X shape. <coughs> and this X shape is the doubling of the chromatin per chromosome. So basically the chromosome doubles in its size in terms of its parts. We call each of these parts, so these two lines of the X, a sister chromatid. <coughs> after we divide, or after, excuse me, after we replicate the DNA, we're going to get ready to divide the cell. The division of the cell is collectively what we call M phase, that we divide into two parts. Part one is the splitting of the nucleus. We call that mitosis, which is also part of M phase. Mitosis, if we look, we can see visually things happening, and we describe what we see by using words. The first thing I'm going to see is I can see the chromosome starting to appear. We call that prophase because prophase means the start or the starting phase. We're also going to make what we call the mitotic spindle. This is fancy speak for just a protein that's going to help move <coughs> the chromosomes. We're also going to get rid of the nucleus because the nucleus is trapping all the chromosomes and we need to let them all <coughs> out of the bag. Prometaphase is when the chromosomes are going to be attached to the spindle so we can start to move them. So prophase, let's start to make the chromosomes, let's get rid of the nucleus. Prometaphase, let's attach the spindle to the chromosomes so we can move them around. Metaphase is where we're going to align these chromosomes in this middle section that we call the metaphase plate. And this is when I wish I were there in person because I would show you that it's a three-dimensional disc <coughs> when it's actually done. But when you look at it on a picture, it looks flat. It's not flat. Metaphase just means stuck in the middle. Anaphase means pull them apart because ana means pull apart or go backwards. So what happens in anaphase is we separate those sister chromatids, meaning this X here is going to get ripped in half. When we rip them in half, we call that anaphase. Telophase is when we start getting rid of the spindle. Each half is really far away from each other. Tello means far away, like a television or a telephone. We'll reform the nucleus, and we're going to make our chromosomes so they're not as pretty looking. They're going to uncondense or unwind, so they're not going to look like nice pretty lines anymore. We figured all this out by looking at pictures. So here, these dots would just be a normal nu <coughs> nucleus. And the catch is, when we look at these, it's because cells are stacked on top of each other, so that makes things screwy. But if you look, we start to get these little black dots that are appearing, and they're separating out. That's what we call prophase. It's starting to decondense. Metaphase is when all these lines, all these dots that you see, are stuck in the middle of a cell. If you look, you could see these little lines that are attached to them. We call those the spindle fibers. Anaphase is right here, where we've taken these and we've split them in half. This is kind of like that little viral thing that went around on TikTok, where people would take tomatoes <coughs> or potatoes or whatever, squish them between two plates, and then you just cut them in half. That's what we do in anaphase. So it's kind of odd that we would talk about that being a viral hack when cells have been doing this for billions of years. These pictures here are from something called a whitefish blastula, which is just a structure found inside of a fish while it's developing. These pictures here are coming from onion roots, <coughs> where we could actually just take an onion root tip and slice it in half and then just stain it and look. So when we do that, we can see plenty of things. So when I don't really see anything specific, we call that interphase. When I start to see lines appearing, 
and I can distinctly make out those little black dots, that's what we would call prophase. Here it'd be really hard to note uh, what prometaphase is, but here's another prophase, here's another prophase. This one here might be a prometaphase. Metaphase is going to be when the chromosomes are stuck in the center. So this, they're in, stuck in the center, stuck in the center, stuck in the center, center, center. Here they're moving towards the center, so this is probably prometaphase. Anaphase is when they're separating away from each other, so we, we can see two distinct sets of lines. So here's an anaphase, and here's an anaphase. Look at it again, I don't see any other anaphases. <clears throat> Telophase is when the parts are far away from each other and we're starting to split the cell. In plants, they do it in a really weird way where they make the cell wall and it just kind of walls off between the two. We animals, we actually squeeze and pinch the cells into two pieces. But that's what we would see. Other way to view it, so this is a <coughs> part of your lab. So this phase here, I see cell or chromosomes that are, look like they're split apart or they're moving backwards. So I would call this anaphase. Here I see two distinct globs and it looks like I'm making a division. So this would have to be telophase. Here I see all those chromosomes lined in the center. So this must be metaphase. Here they're kind of all jumbled around I can kind of make out distinct lines, so this is most likely a prometaphase. If they were more dot-like, I'd call it prophase, but here, because they look like they're a little bit more distinct, I'd be inclined to call this prometaphase. Cytokinesis is the end of M phase, and it occurs after mitosis, and this is how you split the cell into two. It occurs along the metaphase plate and it creates something called cleavage, which is, let's see if I can make a drawing. <coughs> cleavage is when you start to get like a dent. That's because there's a ring around the cell and it's squeezing down and it's gonna squish it into two pieces. You're asked to look around the room about how plants divide. This is going to be for page 81. Again, the way that plants divide is they make this thing right here, which, <coughs> let's see if I can. So this piece right here is a cell wall. which is how plants divide their cells. They just build a cell wall in between. But animals, we squish it into two. So there's several questions for you to fill out between 76 and 82. Between the pictures I've shown you and walked through, you can answer basically everything that you need. You're also asked to view a video. <coughs> So on page 82, you're asked to identify what's going on in 3 seconds, 28 seconds, 34 seconds, so on. So let's do that. So these structures here are chromosomes. We can see that they're moving around. They're quite visible to us, but they're being shuffled around. We can't see the attachments to them, but they are being slowly moved into the center. What they then had is they got ripped in half. Let's show you that one more time. So they're kind of sort of lined in the center, even though it doesn't really look like it. But then, if you, if you looked, these are kind of fat, and then they get split. <coughs> that splitting is anaphase, <coughs> or the separation of the sister chromatids. They're being pulled apart to opposite ends of the cell, telophase. Here it's doing the exact same thing. So here's a nucleus. That's an anaphase, anaphase, anaphase. This is metaphase.
we have a nucleus going through pro prophase, prometaphase, we're going into metaphase. They're kind of aligned in the center. You kind of see them wiggling back and forth. They're kind of lined in the center. Then they're going to get pulled apart. Oh, we had that straggler right there. Notice how the cell waited. And then they get pulled apart into anaphase. That's the cleavage right there, <coughs> which occurred during telophase and then cytokinesis. Meiosis is a variant of of mitosis. The word meiosis means a condition where the cell is reduced. And what you make in meiosis, I know it says me, but it's pronounced meiosis, is you're going to make these structures called gametes. The word gam means marriage, meaning the two cells are supposed to stick, that two of these gametes stick together. They fuse or they marry each other. Each gamete is a small cell. Meiosis makes these gametes, so it makes small cells, or the cell is reduced. What we also see is the number of chromosomes in each gamete is half of the original, and you have what we refer to as a complete set. <clears throat> in us humans, we have chromosomes that are listed from 1 to 22. Then we have either an X, two Xs, or you have an X and a Y. There are variants where that's not true, where you have an X, you have two X's and a Y, or an X and two Y's. So there's some weirdness that goes on. We're going to ignore that. What you really have in terms of this is you have one complete set of these from mom. And you have another set from dad. So I'm going to get rid of that Y. So this would be one set from your mom, one set from your dad, and that collectively is <coughs> what we mean by a complete set. You have a 1 through 22 and an X chromosome, or the like. This is only a process that occurs inside of a germline cell. Germline cells are the ones that produce gametes. In us humans, gametes are going to be sperm and egg. It's dangerous for non gamete forming the cells to run through meiosis because we're cutting off half of the DNA and that's dangerous. So we only want this to occur in cells that make gametes. We don't want this to occur anywhere else. If you have these two sets of chromosomes, we call you being diploid or 2N. N is a complete set. If you have half of the number, we call that being haploid. For humans, <coughs> our diploid number, if you were to count it up, see if I can get this, is 1 through 22 and an X, so that's 23. Our haploid number is 23, and our diploid number is 23 times 2, which is 46. <coughs> When I look at meiosis, it's just like mitosis. It's just, it occurs twice in a row. And the reason for this is it's the only way to make four haploid gametes where each one is going to be genetically unique. And there's several <coughs> techniques that occur to make this true. For our purposes, we're going to super simplify this and just say meiosis one and meiosis two. First half, second half. The first half meiosis 1, is when two sets of these chromosomes are going to get split up. We call the pairs homologous pairs. And what we're going to do is get split them up, meaning if I had... Let's see if I can draw this. A big red chromosome, we'll call that one from... It doesn't matter who it comes from, mom or dad. Again, it doesn't matter. Then we'll have one just like it from the other parent. What we mean by separating these chromosomes 
is in meiosis one, we literally split this up. So one chromosome goes to one side, the other chromosome goes to the other side. That's going to be meiosis one. Meiosis two is when we're going to take each of these chromosomes and we're going to divide them in half, just like in mitosis. So what I mean by that is I'll take each of these. <clears throat> Sorry, this is so painfully slow. But I'm not coughing as much, so <coughs> spoke too soon. What we then do is we take each of these and we divide it in half. So this is meiosis one, and these two here would be meiosis two. What we end up getting would be cells that have in each of them, instead of a red and a green, they'll have either a red or they'll have a green. So they have half the amount that they should have because they should have both a red and a green. And that's what we mean by haploid. To visualize it, <clears throat> in meiosis one, we have a few weird things going on here. So the way that we're going to split up those pairs is during prophase one, what we're going to do is we're going to pair up the homologous chromosomes. When they pair up, they're going to create a structure called synapsis. So synapse just means come together. So synapsis is they come together. So what I mean by that is the big chromosome and the other big chromosome are going to join up, and that joining up is the synapsis. When they come close to each other, and this is a weird phenomenon that goes on with DNA, is we can get something called crossing over or genetic recombination. So if you look at this figure here, these two parts are close to each other, and because they're close to each other, they trade parts. So what this means is these, uh, these final chromosomes are not like the original chromosomes. We have changed how they're built. And that is what's known as genetic recombination, and that's what helps give us a lot of variety during meiosis. Metaphase 1 is the exact same. Anaphase 1, unlike just anaphase, we don't separate the chromatids. We're going to separate... <clears throat> the pairs, just like I drew on the previous slide, meaning here, we're going to separate the pairs. Then telophase is just telophase. Cytokinesis is cytokinesis. If I look at recombination, combination is a literal swapping of parts as they get closer and closer to each other. What we do know from recent studies as in within the last few years, is this has to occur two or three times within each pair. So here we only have it so these inner ones are crossing over. They could also happen between these outer ones too. So what the combination turns out to do is we increase the variety. This always happens if you have synapsis, meaning make these two come close to each other synapses come together, you will get this phenomenon to occur. You don't need to try, it just happens. And like I said, it's a literal swapping of the components. We can watch this going on. <clears throat> so here we go, and I believe you have some questions to answer on this one too.
meiosis is a special type of cell division necessary for sexual reproduction. These are sperm producing cells of a male crane fly, a species with only eight chromosomes per cell. During meiosis, the cell divides twice, producing four haploid cells containing one copy of each chromosome. The first meiosis division separates pairs of homologous chromosomes, creating two haploid cells with only one set of chromosomes. The second division separates the chromatids in each chromosome. The end result is a production of four haploid cells, each with a single chromatid from each chromosome. <coughs> When haploid sperm and egg unite during fertilization, the resulting cell is diploid, having received one chromosome of each pair from each parent. Well, I'm not going to lie, that uh, sound was a little creepy. <coughs> like the water slushing. Yeah, we, we didn't need that. But you got to see what was going on. You saw how they stained the chromosomes with the blue, so you could see the divisions, and how we got two of them inside of each cell. Meiosis 2 is just like... Wait, what? Hey. Why are we misbehaving? So it's strange because I have things to show you here. There we go. Meiosis 2 is just like mitosis. So you're going to be asked to fill in some blanks on page 86 to 89, <coughs> looking at the pictures. So if you look at the pictures I've shown you, it will help. Meaning, how oh, is this going to freak it out? It might. <coughs> these pictures here of meiosis 1, and these pictures here of meiosis 2. You're also going to be asked on page 89 to see, can you put things in order? There are, of course, errors that occur during meiosis. The most famous of these is called non-disjunction. Non-disjunction occurs when you have a failure to separate chromosomes during meiosis 1, or a failure to separate chromatids in meiosis 2. <coughs> so an anaphase failed on us. The result is we get gametes that have the wrong number of chromosomes, and this can lead to fertilization problems. You're going to be asked on pages 99 to 1 to look at some displays about Down syndrome. Down syndrome occurs when you have three copies. Of chromosome 21. <clears throat> and the result is <coughs> all the developmental issues that show up because of having three copies of chromosome 21. Most versions of non-disjunction don't survive, so we actually don't know what a lot of them look like. Down syndrome just turns out to be one of the rare cases where we can see the result of having one too many chromosomes. Usually, if you have not enough chromosomes, they tend to be lethal, and having one too many chromosomes <laughs> tends to be lethal. This is a figure from your text where you're asked to compare and contrast mitosis and meiosis. It should be relatively easy for you. You're asked to look at some cancer slides <coughs> about lung and cancerous lung tissue. What I'll do is I'll find some pictures <coughs> online and I'll post them for you all to look at on Canvas to help you <clears throat> as to what you should be looking at. Big thing about cancer, which is when the cell cycle has gone wrong. So cancer, again, is the cell cycle isn't happening normally. The big deals is cancer tissues do not look normal. So the arrangement of the cells is not normal. They have weird looking shapes and they have abnormal cell division. <laughs> So they're just doing everything wrong when you have cancer. And that's why it's so hard to treat, because they're not behaving correctly. 
You're also asked to look at a kit dealing with meiosis. Um, I'll just provide you answer <coughs> answers for this one just because there's no way for you to deal with it. But that'll be for pages 89 and 90. You also have some displays to look at on for pages 91 or 81, 82, 83, and 91, although I've somewhat told you about to look at. Obviously, congratulations, you all put the mic. The microscope's back correctly, even though we didn't take them out. You put away the, my the meiosis kits. Those are the pages that have data and questions. There's quite a few. Next week, I'm going to ask you about the cell cycle. I'm going to ask you about mitosis. I'll ask you about meiosis and then a review question. We will... Oh. This is going to be asking you about lab... I believe six. Are we already at lab six? I believe so. Wow, we're kind of booking it along. So we'll inquire about <coughs> some of that. Obviously, please turn in one PDF. Um, page 96 has some additional help. So um, you're going to want to do that because you're going to need to gather those data for next week's lab because we're going to be analyzing the data you gather. So you're going to want to fetch information here. Um, clearly there's no exit ticket, so why is meiosis only limited to a very particular set of animal cells? So we could talk about that. Once I think about it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the quiz on Canvas as a Canvas quiz, and I'll give you two chances at it because it's in a different format and you're not where you're used to taking it. So it'll just be the better of the two scores. So you know, it'll follow the exact same format as the previous one. Um... And as long as you get it done by next Wednesday, life will be good. So that's everything we need to deal with. Sorry again, I'm sick as my nose <coughs> is snotting up, so I need to go blow my nose. I'll see you next week.